this is one way to pour. And the Belgian way, I guess, straight through. Not bad. First time trying this beer. <laughs> I'm a, a professional driver. The chrome nose of Sam Hubinet as they come into the horseshoe. Sam Hubinet dragging the brake there. <laughs> Currently, the last Several years I've been focusing on pure stunt driving for TV commercials and uh, a movie here and there. I started driving very young. My dad let me take the steering wheel at a young age. I grew up above the Arctic Circle in Sweden, if you don't know that. So we went to frozen lakes where they plowed ice tracks. It was very convenient to learn to drive and slide around and learn to drift. And around eight years old, I started to drive his old Mercedes 300 diesel. Kind of went there several times per week and just was a good training facility and open space. And even if you made mistakes, you slide up into some snow walls. It was very forgiving. My first car was an Opel, o Opel Manta, it's called uh, 1983. It's similar to Nissan 240, a rear wheel drive platform four-cylinder engine, that was a two-liter that I bored up to 2.2 because .2 I blew up the engine just after a few days owning it. Synchronized rear, a reverse gear, which was cool. You could come in speed and pop in the reverse and just do a forward reverse <laughs> burnout and slide into a parking spot. It was pretty cool. From Sweden, they saw me crazy, boom. The nickname Crazy Swede started in 2004 when we started the Formula Drift. Obviously it was, a, it was about getting attention on the, on the track and, and we just kind of hugged the walls and went all out. I would say my dad inspired me. He was kind of a little nutshell, so I always looked up to him and watched him you know, and trigger him to do burnouts and, and slide on gravel roads and outside our town. And our diesel Mercedes didn't have much power, even if you put a turbo in it. But so basically I remember asking him to go out outside town and give me a ride on gravel roads and do rally. He was good, but I remember growing up, start watching like, I oh, should have done this and I start feeling like I could do better. And I will always believe in myself. And, but he taught me a lot, so a lot to thank to my, my pops. Not too often, but uh, sometimes for New Year's, there's a, there's a great uh, song they have that we crank up sometimes. My wife, Steen, is also Swedish, so of course we gotta play some Swedish music. Back in the day, uh, I got the sponsorship with Mopar Dodge and the only car that was making sense at the time was the Dodge Viper. At that time, it was like a dream car that I had not even been sitting inside. So it was like amazing to be able to now be a professional paid driver and drive this crazy American muscle car. The current prior car we have is the Huracan Drift car we purchased last year. And the purpose of this vehicle is to bring awareness to my wife Stina. She's, a, she's also a stunt driver and working with me and my same stunt team LA Motorsports. Basically get her ready for some cool commercials or potential movies. <laughs> That's our current car and we're going and doing drifting and having fun with it still. I was just in a movie called Escape Plan 2 
uh, doubling Dave Bautista. Then uh, back in the day, the Fa Fast and Furious franchise, I did three, four, and five. Night and Day, Nightcrawler, I got awarded for best work with vehicle for the Tour Stunt Award, uh, doubling uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, maybe 15 movies I've done uh, throughout the last few years, I mean, 10 years, so. It will be cool to get into a great GRC car. I compete against Ken Block, 2000, the season 2011. Ken Block for the, the World Championship Series or, or Tanner in the GRC Series would be awesome. Jim Lau, I can't believe you said that. It was very nice of you. After all the trouble I ca probably caused in Formula Drift. No, I mean, it's very cool to hear. I did have a fantastic uh, a career going through uh, drifting there my first, you know, from 2004 up to 2011. I achieved uh, two championships and nine first place victories and I think 16 podiums overall. Uh, I'm a very thankful for the years and, and the fact that some people still remember me. But I think, uh, I mean, you're trying to do them all. And that's the only way to win a Formula Drift event. You gotta be precise and have some style, but more, I'm sure, more precision. Put in those clipping points and be close to the walls without damaging car. I didn't have too many crashes throughout those years. I didn't go balls out to get those style points, more of the precision and just make it through the competition and hopefully make it on the podium. I would have to have a, of course, the top competitor car, a team that knows what they're doing, a budget. There's so many things involved. And I would have to go and uh, do some training to get up to speed with the, the style they're having nowadays with more angle. But it would be definitely fun to try it, but I, you couldn't do it just in one event. You have to learn to drive against all these new players, all the new drivers in, in the Formula Drift series. So. Drive. Back in the day, I would say me and Reese were back, going back and forth uh, several years. I mean, we were high arrivals. It's Mad Skills, Millen, and Samuel Hubenet. Oh, this is going to be a good battle. Oh, Sam Hubenet. And then Tanner got into the scene and he mixed it up. So, I mean, pick a couple guys that would be Reese and Tanner. We were going against each other for so many years. So I, I have competed in Formula Drift and uh, Rally X Games, Global Rally Cross, uh, Torque Tracks as short course off-road series, touring car racing series, both here in Sweden. So it's and uh, Baja 1000. So there's a lot to pick from. Pretty much had most fun driving the tracks as Torque off-road series in those trucks. It was just uh, really fun. They, those trucks can ha take so much damage. You can be so much in contact with each other and battle. And so I would say, yeah. Tracks is Torco for series when I ran that it was top of the line. Keep driving my Ram truck that fits six people and a big, you know, bed back there. Reliable diesel Cummins. Yeah, my truck. Just because of the character, Reikinen, I would say, because he makes me smile because the way, the way he is as a person, Kimi Reikinen. He may not be the best driver, I would say, but most entertaining and someone, you know, sticks out in the, in the whole group because he tried some rally, didn't do well. So he's, yeah, he's just, he's kind of cool because he just doesn't care what anyone, you know, say to him or anything. It's kind of neat. Kimi, you missed the presentation by Pele. Will you get over it? <laughs> yeah, I was having a shit. <laughs> I 
I, I, I thought that I shouldn't make that happen, but when you see the drive my son has for cars, I'm starting to realize, well, maybe it's gonna be his path too. And one of my daughters, she's a, definitely a tomboy and gearhead already. So we'll see. My, my youngest daughter, she won't. She's all about princess dresses and can care less of winning. So she won't be in this industry for sure. I think me and JR had some uh, tough rivalries and I remember some uh, events, uh, in my opinion, he slowed down, I, I tapped in the back and he accused me of hitting him, driving into him or otherwise. So those tensions happen, of course. If you win also, I had a stint of uh, victories there for a while, of course, that makes other people uh, dislike you because everybody wants to win, and I totally understand that. We had more of those survivors than I think anyone else. The first you know, big block movie I was in was Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. So that was a big breakthrough for me to get the opportunity to drive for Tokyo Drift, you know, be in Hollywood scene and get to drift and doubling horn and mainly and the drift king and you know I became a test driver in 1992 it was a seasoned driver for winter test driving that was a huge step to be paid to drive then I became a full-time 1995 and moved to Gothenburg Sweden to the Volvo program ground there I got a part of a team we started doing touring car racing so one thing led to the other I was doing their stunt driving for the commercials all those years so that was a paid job but then I decided you know what I always had a dream for the USA specific California so and Hollywood was you know tempting so I decided to quit my job sold everything and say goodbye to my friends and family and moved over here and started hustling here which was a lot of work and a lot of challenge and a lot of craziness because September 11 happened just two months after I moved here so Skip Barber Racing School that I at that time got into work for as instructor went bankrupt like after three months so at the time I wasn't sure if there was the right choice I did but I just remember being on the beach down in Newport one, one day and I, and I was like I'm happy here anyway so I'm just gonna stick it through and be here. And after that, the economy started picking up 2002 and one thing led to the other. D1 brought in drifting 2003 to the States and I heard about it and I started getting myself in there. And, and from that on, I became a you know, paid driver in 2004. Ah, not bad. Might get some of these. Thanks for watching. I'm Sam Hubenet. I'll with you later.